one way or another, we're going to continue with this um, select board meeting on September 11th of 2023 in the town of Rochester, which has been posted in three places publicly, which yes. I saw, and also on the website and emailed to interested parties. Okay. And the first item on the agenda is the minutes from the, our prior meeting of August 28th, which um, looked complete to me, and yes. I move to approve those short, unless you have changes. Short and sweet. Yep. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And we have um, a couple folks in, guests here, um, Tom Paquette, Nancy, and... Um, Michelle. 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 Sorry. Michelle. <laughs> didn't know that. I know your last name. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, um, I'm, I'm presuming that you guys are here to talk about the first item on the new business uh, about the cemetery expenses. Yes. So, yeah. so what's on your mind? Um, well, I'm going to hand out what I came up with today. It's, I called it the Rochester Cemetery Deferred Maintenance Report. <laughs> and it thank is. You. Hold on. If you have enough, thank you. We have plenty. It's kind of a summary, um, and it's not all inclusive, but it's a summary of items um, that have been deferred over the years of the cemetery. And um, they're beginning to show quite a bit of wear and tear. And we're beginning to not be able to handle some of this maintenance stuff with our, our regularly, regular approved budget. Um, and as you, you see, I broke it down on, on a bunch of stuff. Uh, road maintenance, fence maintenance, brush removal, uh, stones that have fallen or another disrepair, uh, the, the, the fountain, and things that we've never had at some of our cemeteries, or any, any of them actually, entrance signs and posted rules and regulations. We think that would be helpful if people entering cemeteries would be able to see what, uh, what's, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And we always have the digitizing of our records and maps. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily deferred maintenance, but. Uh, no, I think it is. Yeah, it is deferred, so. <laughs> it needs it's deferred maintenance of our records, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> um, so, um, I, I just we just wanted to bring it to to light here in front of the in front of the uh, select board to tell you what our what our issues are. We um, we try to present a a budget every year when the budget re request comes in that includes some of this. Um, but year after year, it's pretty much a, 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 a level budget that mm -hmm. gets approved. And um, that's pretty much just the mowing of the cemeteries, basically, is what we can do with that money. So So did you have a um, rough dollar figure on all well, this? Well, we haven't really... We could come up with one very quickly we if could. you look at mm -hmm. these items. We, we haven't prioritized, all this stuff needs to be done, but we haven't yeah. prioritized it. Um, I'm thinking roads are, they're, they're big potholes, they fill in water every time it rains. Um, Keep getting worse. Which getting then worse. requires people to drive over on people's lots, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. making a new um, road. Brush on the edges are encroaching. Um, it's, it, in fact, in some places, it's right up against the road that People are driving to go around the perimeter of the cemetery. Um, yeah, we can come up with. We, we have can come up with a really quick. With the brush, there are trees that are encroaching also, which mm -hmm. need to be probably taken down. Well, I I walked through five cemeteries this morning to take some real quick look at the brush. And I itemized uh, dead trees. We mm -hmm. just had a tree come down in Woodlawn and knocked a, a headstone off. We tried to go through the town's insurance. We haven't heard back from them. We did have some correspondence, but we never heard if they approved it or not. And we've been delaying standing that stone back up 
questions they had was, is, was the town aware of this dead tree? And if so, why didn't they, why didn't they address it before it fell down on to a headstone? Don't you expect to have dead things in a cemetery? <laughs> Well, I don't know that the tree was was that dead. It was dead. Um, yeah. And there are other dead trees around the perimeter. Yeah. I itemized yeah. them uh, yeah. per cemetery here. And um, it costs money. And, and I don't want to send anybody up there with a chainsaw to cut these. They're gonna, some of them are going to land mm -hmm. on the cemetery unless you do it properly. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a priority. I think rushing back is a priority. I think road repair is a priority. We need to fix a couple of fences. Um, they look like hell. So if you want a quick estimate, I think the road one probably is the most expensive, but I, I bet we have uh, $30 worth of work here. $30,000 $30, of work here. You know, I, I wouldn't expect Steve Twitchell's crew to do all the debrushing around the perimeter. And, mm -hmm. and some of them needs a lift to get up there to, to cut a couple of high branches. So you hire a contractor to do that kind of work. So. Yeah. Well, just with what we've done on the park <clears throat> um, and the estimates that we've gotten from Tom Johnson on just the park trees alone, each each dead tree removal is about 1200 bucks. So if you've got, what, 10 trees there? Yes, yeah, more them are real small four, diameter. eight, eight five, and ten, fifteen. You got sixteen trees there, so you're looking at twenty thousand almost just no. for the tree removal. If you if they're all done by a someone with that's going to take care of the tree itself. If they're all There's big. a few small diameter trees like on the edge of Bingo that could go down over the bank away from the cemetery. Yeah, so I just counted all the dead trees. They're not yeah. all going to have to be done by a... They're not all going to have to be... They're no. not all leaning over the stone. No, they're, they're not, not all, all trees, Inc. They're right. not all 15 Yeah, I know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to ballpark stuff. That's all. Well, plus, getting a lift, you could probably get it into Woodlawn, but I don't think you're going to get a lift in, like, the village mm -hmm. cemetery or probably not even bingo without doing more damage than... It's worth doing. We've got right. stones down over here that are falling over the bank. Mm -hmm. We didn't even put in there the, the edges where the bank is falling off that we need material to build it back up. Well, yeah, we could keep adding. How do you want to tackle this? By uh, cemetery or by category? Do you want to say, no, okay, let's like get... to talk about ARPA funds. Okay. So then you just like need to, to present us with a number, and then um, it would be nice to have that number broke down by category so we know if we're hiring right. contractors or landscapers, you know, or, or someone with a lift, right. um, so that we can, we can fold it into maybe another project <coughs> as well and um, prioritize it by date. If you had that, I'm sure you said all of it needs uh, to be done as soon as possible. Yesterday, yeah. Um, but it's yeah. every single year the cemetery budget gets cut. But we're at a point now the money that is comes through the budget, which is basically now the town and the trustees. Um, we are anticipating that our mowing fees are going to, they could double. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We understand. Very quickly. You all, you know. Yes, yeah. we understand. It's not, everybody's going to work for nothing forever. That's going to be the same for all of our properties anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're it all going to be faced with that, so. So, um, I would think if you put together a more realistic proposal so that you've got things pretty well spelled out and a little more accurate, that we can probably throw some ARPA funds at it. I don't see why we Do wouldn't be able to. Do you have any, any uh, samples from some of the other departments that requested ARPA funds so I can see how they presented it? I'd, I'd just they take exactly your list. They did exactly what you're doing. Yeah, just, just, just take your list and figure account. out what you're what it is and we'll go from there. We'll, we'll I'm just wondering how much I mean, detail you for, want. For example, like, uh, like Skate Space uh, asked for a specific dollar amount. It wasn't 
everything they wanted, but that's what they asked for. I mean, did they break it down like he's suggesting? Well, their project was much larger than what they asked us for. They, they were going for grants and things. So they had they an engineering study done and all that. So with, with you guys, you can go and get a couple prices on doing the, the, you know, the driveways and that, and then you could get the trees that you're going to need a lift person to do, you know, break it down that way. And what, you know, somebody like Steve Twitchell or them could take the small trees out or whatever, you know, break it down that way, and, and that'll be the easiest thing to do, I would think. We can do that. And I would think that would be pretty easy to break it down. I mean, you know, the, you know you've got 16 trees here. How many of them need a lift? You know, you can't just put a ballpark number on what the trees yeah. are. So mm -hmm. if you go down and look and see which ones you're going to need careful attention of getting them on the ground, then you're going to get an idea of what the price is going to be for those trees. So then you, that gives you a ballpark number. You can go to any of the contractors in town and they're going to give you what it's going to cost for the entrance. You might even ask Cooter what he thinks of what it would cost to do that much. And he could give you a ballpark number. So well, then Cooter's you have not interested in taking his trucks across the bridge. No, no. And there's no reason for him to do that. But he could maybe give you a number of what it's going to cost you to get the material there and have somebody do it. He might be able to break it down for you, or you can ask one of the contractors in town. You know, Ray would probably give you a number on it. Dave might give you a number on it. I mean, there's several around that would do that. So you can't. We have a man left. And then you can kind of figure out and go from there. And if you come up with some kind of number, then we can look and see what, what the money is going to be. So when we look at the broken and fallen down stones, they're on old lots. Right. So we know that the people who own the lots are responsible for those, but those people are long gone. There's nobody around. Right. right. It's we do have to take care of it. Yeah. Right. And and so you get some kind of idea what it's going to cost. And well, I think Tom's got. Yeah, I've talked to uh, Green Valley Memorials. They've already been over and give me an estimate on um, those stones that have fallen off the foundation, but they aren't the old stones that are broken in half and lying on the ground. I haven't got estimates for those. In fact, all I said here were there are dozens of them. There are dozens of those. Right. Over here. I don't even think they're irreparable. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what he told me about those is you'd have to replace a stone with a new stone if you want it up with all the data on there, who it was, when they died, and all that stuff. Uh, I don't think we're asking for that. Well, I don't think that that's our responsibility yeah, that's to do not that either. Perpetual care. Yeah. No, perpetual care does not do anything. They, they can't do that. No. All no. perpetual care does is take care of mowing. Not even cleaning? No, we don't no clean. that's the responsibility I, of a lot of I don't know how to answer, what, what the answer with that other than, I don't know if there's some kind of historical value the state ha would have for repairing old cemeteries or a grant. Situation no, I don't think that. the state does. I, I think it's all volunteer work. Is it? I, it comes I have through no the idea. Vermont I'm Old Cemetery Association. To figure it out. And if you're lucky enough to get them to come to work at your cemetery, right? Um, they'll do it through a grant. But every cemetery in the state is the same up thing. I'm sure. With the people that are part of the association and other volunteers that go to help them. What would you, is there a deadline you'd like to see all this in, better information in on? No, I don't think so. I, the sooner you I get it in, the sooner we can make a run on it. You know? You want to get to work? This do you, year? Do you want the money are allocated or do you want the work completed? Are you hoping to get this work completed this year? Oh, no. No. Okay. It's too late. I think ARCO okay. funds we have to spend yeah. by the 20, 20 year 25, 26, yeah. is it? But does it have okay. to be assigned they by be, a certain They have time? to be obligated by, by 25, next right? year, December. They have to be spent by 26. 
So we can put together, um, and that's yeah, better. a plan. But yeah, a better plan, and that's the, you know, then more we can, than a, We can work on it. We can see if we can secure contractors for next year, and uh, that way you would have a battle plan and get maybe two thirds of it done, which would be a big plus. <laughs> It just is, and then we just have to stop the deferred maintenance, like everybody has to I know. stop the deferred and maintenance. Well, that's a town that is famous for that finance over the years, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we're facing, facing that all the time. You don't have to look very far to see it. Right. Yeah. It's the school, it's the, library, the library, it's everywhere. So perhaps you know? it's time, it's, it's, whole, it's cemetery is up any to back town property. Well, I think it oh, would be nice if we nice. could find funds yeah. to help out with the cemeteries mm -hmm. um, would be nice. The right. fountain in here, as soon as we get the monument, I'm going to go to work on getting a fountain. So I'll, I'll keep collecting bottles <laughs> and we should be able to get a fountain mm -hmm. without it having to be town funds. Yeah. I, it's, over the years when I presented a budget, I've always had some bullet items that I didn't really expect or even propose to get funded. It's just like it was a placeholder for these items um, year after year. And I think this, the, um, the fountain's been on there for probably a decade or more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, still it's too there. bad they lost the old one, right? It's pretty lost. <laughs> yeah, it is. Was that vandalism? Somebody stole, Somebody stole it. Somebody stole it. That was a long time ago. Jeez, girl, that must have been 50 years, But we've years, got the water issue. Ago. That needs to be, we need to have it for the fountain. Yeah. yeah, we just need to have a more efficient water system for the two monuments. Right. Well, just put it together. Yeah, and then I mean, we're, we're open to using ARPA funds for okay. this. And um, we will get figures. Come back to meeting or just bring it in? You we'll bring it in and then we'll put it on the agenda right. for whatever yeah. meeting right. we yeah. have, you yeah. know, whenever you get it together. And then we'll figure out what we got to do. I know we have some ARPA funds that we're using for different projects already, but, you know, we can see if we can't fit some in there. That's for sure. Is there a dollar figure that? Uh, I wouldn't dare to say. Uh, there's some major projects still we want to get done, yeah. and I, and I don't want to step out and say we we'd be willing to give you so much money because so we're, I want we'll to I want to try to get those for you. Yes, that's what I would with like. With a bottom line. Yeah, yeah, and that would be good. And then and we can priorities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and put it in a priority system yeah. there, and then make sure we get the stuff with that we have to do that we haven't been able to yet. But high this, ticket ones. I know. We got this wall over here is the big one for us, mm -hmm. and we try to do something with the library. So yeah. those are the two big ones, and then definitely there there will be if all works out, there'll be money left over for something like this. That would be ideal. Where do we, we stand do with digitizing the records? Are we at a percentage or? A yeah. It's, a, it's data entry that's taking place, it's right? You data. have the program. It's all data yeah. entry mm -hmm. after it gets somewhat organized, then we can get into it. Okay. The records are a mess. How often are you um, requested for information from people looking like for Like genealogists? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's becoming more frequent. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, because of Ancestry.com. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh -huh. So um, it is, that is a vital thing that we need to move towards. Well, and I think it's not really fair for these two to have to be in there looking up the, the difficult <coughs> time of looking up genealogical records. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're in, with, in such a mm -hmm. Index state cards of, and shoeboxes. Yes, mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> it's... It goes back so many years that they were not kept properly. And it needs modernization. That's mm -hmm. all. Well, it just yeah. it's going to need people who either new people, remembered people, um, can look at a card and instantly know whether something is correct or not mm -hmm. correct. Marcus. 
Yeah, yeah Marcus would he he would have been for yeah. a, a big a big help big to help, us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's it's um it's when you pick up the records and you see that nobody ever put anything on them. And then that impacts the cemetery commission or the sexton in where and how to bury somebody. Mm -hmm. um, where they're placed in the lot. Right. Yeah. And then we're, now we're dealing with cremations and people going up against the policy mm -hmm. and digging their own yeah, they're, yeah. hole, their there are, grave. There are families who are burying them. Their own cremation. We found one. Without any. We found one last weekend when we were down there. They were just digging away. <laughs> Not on their own plot. Just <laughs> no, they were on their own plot. Oh, okay. that's a plus. <laughs> they bought the record, but they didn't know record. They, they weren't going to come up here you look and say where where that was going to be placed. Mm -hmm. Right. And that we keep finding those. And. Hmm. Okay. No, I was just curious because I, I would expect that it would be an increase of, you know, inquiries about where great grandma and great grandpa Well, they're doing are that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to find them, right. they're really and interested back in the 1700s now. Yeah. And they're, yeah, they're good really luck with that. <laughs> Nancy's good. We just, we're like 1 800 Nancy. We need Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> She's good at that. They got to be up in Bingo or West Hill. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because so many of these people some of them when over they here too. came into Rochester, it came in down on the Stockbridge Pittsfield line. Right. right. And so then you're dealing with the old maps and, yeah, well, yeah. and the land records. Which is how they recorded things. And all the and writing that's hard to read. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. You can't read it. Cur real cursive. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. we, we will get specific. That's right. Having a computer, too, would be, It'd be 99 page report. To do the work. But the problem with well, the you can whittle, whittle it down to a page. That should be pretty easy to do. I would think. Just a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All we need is a dollar amount. You can budget it any way you want. Can't we do all the work and then give it all to you? So <laughs> get it done. I almost wonder if, I don't, if that's because it's um, in the cloud. We were. She would be able to log. In. Remember, we she had would to be able to log people in. People break yeah. into the cloud for cemetery records. Oh. No, I'm just saying that that no, might be that you could work off yeah. site in house and work Remember in the, the cloud book. and then yeah. it will upload yeah. off, off from site. from your house so to the system. All records yeah. should be in here, but I would have to be here with a computer. I don't think so. To look at the records to get it all into it. Mm. Yeah. Well, where the is the program? Oh, the records. Yeah, that you would. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So if fun. I had a laptop or something, I could just you know get. Yeah, and then log into the. Is there now an extra computer here that we could use? I don't know how. Hers Without has. buying for one hour a month or whatever it was. <laughs> Is Joan's computer still? No. No. That's that's Dead. not. It would it would be this one. Um, yeah. Yeah. We probably could do something with it. We just need to talk to our tech guys first and make yep. sure that that's all locked down and okay. But we could do that. I can check with them. Yeah. It'd be nice if it's mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Winter's yeah. coming. Yeah, I was gonna say Time nice to do this work. something to do on a yeah. snowy day. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for your enthusiasm and, and working well not. Well, we want to make their yeah. lives easier. Yeah. And Tom's life easier. Yeah. I will tell you another one. Her, did you know that Herb Campbell is in town? No. He's in town. He came by the Front Harvest Fair yesterday or Saturday and said, Oh, there's a lot near my mother where my mother is. And the woman died, but she was going to, she said that we could have her lot. So I said, <laughs> Oh, well, what's her name? And he told me what her name was. And she's since died and left everything to her two nephews who live in Georgia, and she lived in Kentucky or Tennessee or one of those. So I went online to see if I could find her obituary to get any more information. Mm. Oh. Her name is Highlander. 
Ah, I know where that lot is. Well, it's going to be an empty lot if it isn't empty right now. And we could go back after her, those two nephews, and see if they would sell the lot. Might have to sell it back to the town, but at least it could be made available to us. So I've got the information. You could make it available to the public and then you know, pay, pay But we just need to get them to sign the deed back. Right, exactly. So there are lots of them out there. All so right. we're not really looking for more cemetery space. Yes, like, we are. Oh, yeah. that's not even on the I list. I know that was an issue like many years ago, and it hasn't been brought it's up. It's an issue anymore. now. And it's getting tighter and tighter every year. So cremations are not alleviating that need for... Well, the lot sizes are still the same size, We've Pat, still whether you have a full eight person casket long. or well, I can not. Put person. Six, you, you six can. cremations are one casket. Right, but the yeah. lot sizes are already spelled out. So yeah, but I'm chunking yeah, them Yeah, I'm gonna put six people where there used to be one. Right. Right. Yeah, but they have to be the same family. You can't just stuff somebody else. No, <laughs> no, we're all gonna be we're all gonna be right. related. Yeah, we're all gonna be related. Just go on ancestry.com. Well, we had we had a woman here a couple of weeks ago. She wanted to go into a lot that wasn't <laughs> right. even related to her. She had a relative that was in. She wanted to go into that lot. She liked the said, view. You can't do that unless you contact the family. Yeah, they, you know, right. they're deeded lots. Can, we yeah. can't give you permission for that. Wow. <laughs> Show me your deed. He's doing. He's getting into these things all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, anyway. To be continued, right? Yeah. It will be. Thank you for yeah. listening to no, us. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. No, it's good to have the time to talk about it. And, I'd Not like to get it talked about before we have budget time. Oh, well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I just say one? Yeah. So I was walking around the old village. Can I make a comment? Um, no. Let Tom, right, right after Tom does. Yeah, Tom was just about to say something here. Yeah, I was just going to add one more thing. Um, when I walked around the perimeter of the old village lot and coming around and back to the store, there's an old chain link fence back there. Mm -hmm. It's all grown up with vines and whatnot. And I'm not sure that chain link fence belongs to the store or to the cemetery. And or Irma? No. Mm -hmm. Oh no. No, it's, no, it's behind the store. Yeah. And there's two big dead trees, totally dead. Um, well, ninety percent dead. There's a little leaf or two up there, but they're leaning right over the cemetery. Um, I guess we should have to we're going to have to determine whose land that is. I think it's a store's land mm -hmm. on the other side of the chain link fence. Mm -hmm. but and we may have to approach them. Whatever the line is, you can go straight up and take care of the no, part of the It's tree. a big, it's probably an 80, 18 inch diameter tree and it's leaning. Tree. And if you only go straight up, you're only going to get a branch or two, but eventually the things are going to come down. I wonder if there is a survey map of the store. Because there's mm, probably there's not one of the village cemetery. I don't know. Right, well, yeah, I remember when BC they were in pens, corner pens. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the store property back there. And this. I can there, look. I, I, I can't remember the the gentleman that was in for. So we can't spend town can, money to move a tree up. on private property. So those two trees, I probably should take out of the. the mix. Well, I don't know. I think we get landowner permission, and if they come down on town property, then, then, then we have a problem. If we come down on the store too, we might just want to bring it to their attention. It's like, hey, you don't need a hole yeah. in your roof, right? We, you yeah. know, it's um, and work together with. We them noticed sort of. while we were surveying the the cemetery that is a potential problem for the uh, mm -hmm. hazard. Just as a little side story. Um, um, then Marcus's old house there in Elnor's, there was a big giant maple in there that a giant chunk of it came down in a storm and it fell into the cemetery and it went right next to, 
It did not break one stone. Mm -hmm. It just went, I mean, and it went like 60 feet into the cemetery, a big one, and it was just, it just cradled all these stones that it had been living next to. A respectful tree. Yeah. 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 Respectful tree. Somebody was looking out for it. Yeah, it was was amazing. Well, it's also, we have to listen. Fortunate that that it was not, um, that there was nobody in there at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in the middle of the night, yeah. Robert, you had a comment? I'm trying to make a comment. Yeah. This is a public meeting. And so, yep. and so I have the authority and the right to speak. Where, go ahead. In regards to the conversation that's been going on for almost 45 minutes, Nancy Woolley has great points. And it's not a laughing matter. And you guys sit back, put your arms over your heads, and laugh. It's not a laughing matter. And I'll, I'll put this forth to the select board, to Martha Slater, uh, go up and talk to uh, uh, Stevie Twitchell. He's the guy that that did everything he could to survive or bring back the bodies that were washed out during Irene. So I would respect anybody, a chairperson or select board member, to have respect for the, the death and not sit back and laugh during this meeting. It's a disgrace. Has been. And you know, my point, my point with regards to Nancy Woolley's respect for the park and the cemeteries is a hundred percent. But you, 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 you're all sitting back laughing. This is not a laughing matter. So when your family buys graveyards for eight bodies, and then you sit back and laugh, uh, it, it, it's a subject matter that is has been very disrespectfully and and in my conscience, in my town, or well, driving into Rochester when I pass the cemetery, I will never forget Nancy Woolley's intention to support the the, the park and the cemetery so you guys can move forward and i wish you a good night okay good night Night. (laughs) okay um moving on to the next item on the agenda was um we got some office closings in october oh yes (laughs) <laughs> Which is when? <laughs> uh, so Tuesdays in October, uh, we're planning to do the budget and finance starting at 4. So we were going to close the office for the Tuesdays at 4. Um, um, October through the end of December. Through the end of December, right. That's the first. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch any dates. Did I? Did you say dates, and I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm having so starting in starting in October, the Tuesdays through. It's going to be starting in October through December. Budget and finance. We're going to have uh, committee meetings from uh, four o'clock on, so the office will be closed Tuesdays at four. And then. Um, October Friday the 6th. Thank you. So Friday the 6th, both of both Kristen and I will be out that day, so um, the office will be closed then. And then on October 12th, it's a Thursday, we'll both be out again. Where there's meetings and stuff coming up. All right. So in November we'll be skipping Thanksgiving Day for the, the, the Tuesday, or we'll be Tuesday and then Thanksgiving. I think you've got it scheduled through the yeah, 19th I'll be, of December. I'll be sending out. Um, Kristen has already sent out the um, budget worksheets for all the departments, mm-hmm. and then this week I will be sending out the um, notice so that you can see all the dates and when there can right. there'll be. One of them is Halloween. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. So Tuesday, though, right? So we should talk about the cemetery budget on Halloween. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Okay. 
All right, great. Thank you. Um, we have anyone from the library on Zoom? No. 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 And the highway, the bridge is, people are driving over the West Hill Bridge now, right? They mm -hmm. are. They are. Yeah. And they, uh, they haven't got the guardrails yet. They put up the barriers, yeah, so the Jersey barriers. Um, he said the guardrails were supposed to be here this week, but didn't know if that was going to happen or not, yeah. steel and all that. So, and then uh, John's doing culvert replacement uh, this week. He wanted to do, and I think he's going to assist them some at the bridge uh, with material that they use for the temporary. He's going to take some of it up on the hill mm -hmm. to gravel part of West Hill Road with. And um, that's about it. He's had an issue with one of the trucks. The International has been a is down at this point. I'm not sure it's back yet. Um, and that's about it. Yep. So is the um, graveling or the graveyard drive something that we could ask the road crew to take a look we at? We could look at that, I think. I, I don't know why we couldn't do some of it. Yeah. I mean, with, with assist. I mean, we don't have all the equipment. We'd have to look at that as a road budget item mm -hmm. i mean as far as you don't have any anything to to spread the you know you can spread the gravel with the grader in some places up there but i'm sure some but of it's just a little can tight. we talk about hard pack or that reclaim on those cemetery paths i i would go i would ask john what his yeah. recommendation would be first before, because that stuff, that's fine if you put it down in it when it's really hot, because then it acts well, like right. cement. And then, but after a while, once it gets, once you start getting holes in it, yeah, then you can't do anything with it. Yeah. You can't scrape it, you can't fix it up, you can't do anything with it's it. Better to mix it in with the other material. Right, yeah. but so in a road like the cemetery, I mean, let's face it, I, you and I've been around here longer than most people so that are here so we've seen, seen nothing new up there for ever and so that road has been the same forever. forever and it used to be paved all the way up through there and it still is signs of pavement there right. um, but you know that's been Christ, what, 60, 70 years that that's probably been that way? Mm -hmm. So whatever material we use up there, it's not like you're going to open it all winter. So it doesn't get as much use. The only time you're getting use is really in the summer, in the fall, spring. You know, Memorial Day on is really when it's active. So any type of material that we put up there, you know, as far as like crushed gravel or whatever would probably last for... 30 years without, you know, causing any issue. As, or at least that would be my thought anyway, but I would ask somebody that deals with it and just to see what they would say, recommend doing there. That's the way I would look at it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, paving the hill is nice. I mean, that's a, the right thing to do there, the entrance way. It keeps the water, you know, it keeps it from you know, keeps it nice there, but yeah. Yeah. as far as the rest of it goes, you know, we may be able to get by with some hard pack gravel mm -hmm. and crush run or whatever out through there that would last for years, any kind of use it gets. So, but I don't know, I'd ask somebody that, like Cooter would be able to tell, someone like that. All right. Um, Anything? Terry's not on Zoom. And have any? I didn't. Any reports on not finding more sump pumps or anything? No. 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 I heard Jeff's voice earlier. Is he's on on Zoom? Yep. Hi, Jeff. Hey. Good evening, all. Um, I just uh, about an hour ago sent a a fairly long email to the board. Um, and to Harry Falconer um, at uh, Two Rivers Otakwichi. Um And basically, I had questions about uh, the Municipal Energy Resiliency Program application. 
Um, I'm all done doing the work of getting ready for a wedding, having the wedding, having the family there for a week, and then a couple of weeks of honeymoon and uh, ready to, to get this thing in. Um, the application is for a detailed energy assessment of town properties and uh, would enable us to list up to five, although I don't know that uh, that's really worthwhile to go that uh, beyond a couple. But uh, uh, this is uh, the program that Buildings and Ground Services at the state um, uh, has talked to us about. And the application again is for the uh, level two assessment. Um, I will um, tomorrow um, try to decide which pieces of my uh, data is the easiest for me to follow and then uh, get that along uh, to all the recipients as well. Um, and uh, go from there. That, that's really uh, the big thing uh, I see from uh, uh, until the end of October when the application deadline is due. Which, which buildings are you thinking? Well, um, the town office, the garage, um, those two are the larger energy consumers. Um, and I don't know whether um, this would qualify, but um, we spend an awful lot of money on street lights. And so I don't know whether there's a, a way to improve the efficiency of that lighting. Um, and, and again, that may not uh, come in under the, the MERP application, but uh, um, energy efficiency and improvements in resiliency, uh, if, if we could sh shove that in, in, if we could fit the street lights in there, I mean. Uh, the street lights are all LEDs. To 23, uh, we, it cost $8,031 for those lights. Right. They're all LEDs, Jeff. Yeah. They all they when they changed them out probably fifteen years ago. Yeah. No. It's still eight thousand. So they're yeah. not billing us on on. They, uh, they have a set rate for them, so I don't know how you can make them any more efficient than that. Yeah. Um, you could the best way to talk to GMP about them, and but that, that's all in rate structure. It's not. Yeah, because whole... there's no actual kilowatt hour numbers in the. Uh and the record for that it's just a a bill yeah no per, per right light. the the way we've reduced it aside from well they did the initiative for the leds but right. now and then we've removed a light here or there and that that and they charge us per light but i don't think we're looking at really removing many more lights there's been just a couple over the years that i can remember that were and some of those were requested. Requested by yeah. people. Yeah. There, there is, there is three different sizes there, um, so that you know there's a, I forget, now it's been a while, but I know that there are three different sizes, and and I'm not sure what the number is we have, but it's it's broken down in the office, and I think on the bills they give you a. a number of which uh, wattage lights they have for those LEDs there's a there's a number count there and, and it's on a it's a it's a monthly charge that they break it down and it's figured on the hours of darkness that's how they figure it or right, that's the way they used to figure it I don't know how they do it now but okay. that's the way it used to be done it's getting darker yeah mm -hmm. So, so they bound, they they round it to a number, because like, it changes, you know. Yeah, yeah that was the uh, single highest uh, electric um, expense. Actually, it's uh, and, and it's all electric. It's the highest expense uh, by item, even when you combine buildings and um, you know fossil fuels and electricity on our buildings. So. But again, the uh, the town office um, in the uh, the garage. Um, you know, I don't know about the uh, the firehouse. It's a brand new building, but it's uh, 
uh, 4,000, 3,000, almost in 2021, it was almost 5,000. Um, 21, 22 is 3,400, and uh, 22, 23, 3,200 for Firehouse. Um, what, you know, what this is for is for a, a level two audit, a detailed audit, um, and it is funded by the state. The state hires the contractors, um, and it would put us in a position uh, to compete for uh, implementation grants. In your message, Jeff, you ask about um, what is Rochester uh, designated under Act 172? Um, are we, we're a village designation, aren't we? Or is that just the village, and is there a town? I, I, I'm not, not able to hear you for some reason, Pat. Speak up. Pat. What is Rochester's Act 172 municipal designation? Now, I know we have a village designation, but right. I think we're a town. Right. We're not a, town, a city yeah. or an incorporated village. Yeah. We are a town. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer that question for you, Jeff, we are a town. Yep. And, um, Another question. I understand you're volunteering to be the primary contact. There needs to be an authorized representative and a primary contact. And I, you know, if that's something you want me to do, I would do it. Um, We'd love that, Jeff. You really do have your finger on the pulse of all this. So I you know, really appreciate your spearheading this. And I mean, it's it's up to the board's pleasure. Um, you know, and I know that if I am leading that, I have no authority to make decisions. Um, it is the board's prerogative to make all the decisions uh, relative to 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 this. But um, um, I'm happy to be the contact uh, through the process. No, we we we're depending upon the information you bring us to make those decisions. So. Um... That's why I got to clean up, clean it all up because it's making my own head swim. Yeah. <laughs> it's government. <laughs> it's too much. Sometimes too much data can't doesn't help. Yeah, right. We designate you as the primary contact for the M E R P assessment program. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Now there's another position too, and I don't need the uh, response tonight if if uh, um, if it's not easy, um, which is the authorized representative. Can we make you that authorized representative as well? Was that directed to me? I, I could... yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we, you've just been nominated to be the authorized representative as well. Excuse no. me. Um, the authorized representative for what? I'm having a hard time hearing, um, like, that in particular. I'm sorry. For an application to the MERP program, the uh, Municipal Energy Resiliency Program. Municipal Energy Resiliency. Program. Thank you. Energy res Resilience Program. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Move along. You got it. Thank you, Jeff. No, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Sorry for being A O L E W O L for so long here. That's okay. You're back. Yeah. As long as you come back, that's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kristen, you got any updates on Grant? Um, not not much right now. I am working closely with Carlos um, on our ARPA still. Uh, I have a follow-up <clears throat> meeting with him next week. Um, ARPA? He's asking, ARPA or, or FEMA? ARPA, FEMA. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's it. We're moving forward with things slowly but surely. So I have another comment on grants. We've just received material, or we've received information on a tree grant for 2024. 
and Frank and I looked around a little bit the other day at the park and decided that we probably could use some new trees to replace mm -hmm. some that are not looking that great. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And there was three, three parts to that, right? Three different grants that you could apply for. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll look at it and see which one really applies and, and work accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then work toward getting down the trees that are really not that are may not looking survive. Well. Yeah, some of them are looking pretty rough. I don't yeah. know if they'll. A lot of it was the frost this spring, and I'm not sure that they're gonna come through. A lot of them were were bucket trees that mm -hmm. were raised in buckets, so their roots yeah. grew to circles, which you know nobody we never really paid attention to. It's so like everything with the buildings yeah. and everything else. So. We we got to put trees in there that are dug from the ground and not. And I was in touch. I sent off an email to him. Oh, to the arborist. To call I mean, Creek. The, uh, yep. To see if if they would have and what he would recommend to be added to the park. Yeah. Well, I remember he loves Rochester Park, so maybe he'll do a nice site visit. It, yeah, he said he <laughs> wants to retire and sit on the porch of the park house <laughs> and look at the park. <laughs> so we're sort of on top of yeah. of getting information. Yeah. Great. And we need to get together to finalize yes. 23. Absolutely. We'll make a date. So under old business, does anyone have um, anything that is on their mind? Or? I did participate in a meeting about the safe routes to school where we received a grant to improve the sidewalk, the sidewalk up here um, and they laid out a time frame that does not include the sidewalk being done next year it would be the year after so we'll go two more winters with that sidewalk mm -hmm. like it is. Mm -hmm. unless we decide to do something with it <laughs> as a safety issue but i don't know i have to think about that a little bit. Well, if they were in town looking at it All right. this this past couple weeks or so, maybe maybe that will put us a little further up the list. Right. I mean, we, you, we can't put it back where it is. I mean, it's just ludicrous to think that it'll go right back where it, where it was. I mean, we're going to have to look at taking some of the parsonage lawn there in order to... <clears throat> Make it work. Get it back way from the road. Yeah, because yeah. it's the pla It's that little sweeping corner kind yeah. of thing. And it's not. It was never put in right to begin with. So, no offense to anyone. But. And Pat, did you? Um, were you with the? Uh, there was a meeting about the school repurposing. Yes. Um, what was what was decided out of that meeting that included the school superintendent mm -hmm. as well. Um, there was discussion about the uh, flood gates, the flood resolution for the doors. Mm -hmm. um, du Bois and King was involved in that meeting and um, it, it was decided that um, anyone, would, it was to answer questions, so there was no real decision, um, but it was to make the proposal to the school about what, which tactic to take to remediate the problem. Du Bois and King said any one of them, the 5,000 or the 25,000 would be accepted by uh, flood insurance. The flood insurance program is the first step towards being accepted everywhere. If, if you get a, a, a rider from them, um, then, then you're good to go with everyone else. So, um, there was a path laid out on how to how to go forward and what which way they were going to go and it, it is being taken care of by the school district mm -hmm. i bet no one heard me <laughs> all right um anyone any more public comments on zoom or in the room zoom's all set zoom's all set well, oh, Martha. Oh. The question.
I I cannot think of the name of the lady who's sitting next to Nancy, and I usually put down everybody who attends. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Michelle. Michelle Schnabel. <laughs> Excuse me? Michelle Schnabel. I can't hear it. I really it's can't. Michelle. It's not just me. Schnabel. <laughs> S-C-H-N-A-B-E-L. That's perfect. You got, you it. got it. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll, I can spell even if I can't recognize faces. I apologize. Thank you. All right, then I would entertain a, a motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Have okay. a good night. Thank you all.